Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Glucky. Welcome to the 473rd Imagine Greater Buffalo program and 95th virtual Imagine lecture hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Thanks for joining us today. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature, or Cezanne, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Now, before we get started, just a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted and your video turned off. If you have a question or comment, you can type it into the chat box and we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. We are recording this program so you can watch it again later on the Downtown Central Library's Facebook page and their YouTube channel. And we hope you share the link with others. Now, onto our featured speaker today, Sharon Kramer. Sharon is a SUNY Distinguished Service Professor Emerita. She has been published in and edited numerous volumes on governance in higher education, teaching, collaboration, leadership, and more. She has a bachelor's degree in English and education from Tufts University, a master of arts in teaching from Harvard, and a PhD in human relations and social policy from New York University. So now let's welcome Sharon Kramer to discuss what have we figured out about life in Buffalo and beyond? And I do this under the theme, our secondary theme that we, uh, we have here at the Imagine program of imagine a healthy, wealthy, and sustainable community. Let's hear what Sharon has to say. Sharon, take it away. Thanks so much, Dennis. I'm really looking forward to sharing my, my ideas and my work with you all. Okay to see my screen? Is it clear and presenting? Yes, you look good. Thank you so much. Okay, well, what I'm gonna be sharing with you today is something that is a question that many people have maybe quietly in their minds, but I brought out into the open. of What have we figured out about life? And when I began up the project, which I called the Mosaic Project, it was for my retirement. And I was trying to think about what I would have asked people who were no longer present and try to give myself some focus for, I, I retired very young at 61. So trying to think about what would I like to see? And this great um, mural that I'm sure all of you are familiar with is a perfect example because when you look at it, you're kind of struck by the overall picture, but then as you like zoom in, you can see um, what they did with the windows, what they did with the doorways and so forth. And what I looked at this project as an opportunity to do was to see Buffalo and people in new, from new perspectives. So what my project offered me was a chance to um, talk to people in two groups uh, who came from two walks of life, I would say. People who were living independently over at Baptist Manor, and then people who served as docents. And they were from all types of docents. Some were in historical settings, some were at Tiff Farm, one at the zoo, uh, several museums. And at the time I did this, Explore Buffalo didn't even exist yet. But I offered these people a chance to answer the question that I raised. What have you figured out about life? And this um, gave me a chance to really um, think about this question. And what I'm going to mention today is um, a summary of some of the things I've talked about. I know that's not my fault, so maybe it's um, New extensions of what, where my research went, and then uh, sharing some of the, my favorite Buffalo and Beyond experiences, because as Dennis mentioned, this idea of uh, what do we do with ourselves in all times of our lives, um, but particularly later in life. So this is how I'm gonna organize the presentation, sharing with you an overview of what I did, as well as a wonderful resource that made a huge difference for me, the 30 Lessons for Living by Carl Pilmer, then share some specifics about my research and then tell you what's happened lately. So the first um, 
part I'd like to share with you is about the project as a whole and then this particular resource. When I began it, I was looking for ways to think about wisdom. And I was looking at it in terms of both words and images. So I felt that the images were gonna give me something that the words could not. And these were the three challenges I faced at the outset. One was how to get to people who were willing to reflect and share their reflections on life. I didn't have any preset groups. And as a matter of fact, some of the people who um, dialed in today, I met through a, a book group at the local library at our um, Julia B. Reinstein Library. And that group had just gotten started. So they weren't really a good candidate. I didn't have any groups. Then I also, my project seemed very complicated and I wanted to figure out how to um, explain it simply so that people would be able to uh, participate easily. And then the last part, and this was very important to me too, I didn't want people just telling the story that they've told so many times. I wanted to have a way to stimulate new ways of thinking. And so I came up with solutions for all of these. I wound up with the Canopy of Neighbors and a docent to docent program that existed at that time, it no longer does. Then I also created uh, three um, sessions and um, it helped to orient people to what I was looking for and give them a chance to think about things together with others and then privately. And then I also wound up creating a sample so they could see what I was thinking about. They didn't exactly follow it, but it, it relieved some of their anxiety. And in terms of getting underneath those rote recitations of life, I was able to incorporate some of Carl Pilmer's program into the um, project. Let me share a little bit with you about him. And I was fortunate to have uh, an opportunity with Joy uh, last week to go do a run through of this presentation. And I found out that there are 10 copies of this book in the, in the library system, two at the central library and eight scattered around. So if you'd like to develop your own project and take a look at this book, I know it will inspire you. So Carl Pilmer, I had a chance to actually communicate with him after I read the book. I reached out to him at Cornell and he was gracious enough to respond. And these are the ways that he struck me as a, a, an extraordinary person. He talked with me about my project and he was completely supportive. He loved the idea of using imagery and um, encouraged me to go on, so I did. What he did was extremely ambitious. Of course, it was funded. He had three studies and he invited people um, over the phone and in person to consider life lessons. He actually was able to reach out to 1500 people, um, which is an extraordinary number. And he referred to them not as seniors, not as elders, but as experts. And I thought that was just an, such an intriguing idea that they're the experts about their life. And um, what it did was consolidate aspects of life in certain ways. Three major ones that are pretty familiar to us, his way of describing them, I think is very um, clever and very positive. And then some less obvious things. These were the, the other themes that he felt his um, work, the, the lessons he heard um, from people fell into. And you really get a different perspective on aging and wisdom from his book. Um, this is, for those of you who've been up at Seneca One, you know, this is the view of Buffalo. And we in Buffalo are so fortunate that we have opportunities like the one Dennis is presenting us to, with today, but others through uh, organizations like Preservation Buffalo Niagara and Explore Buffalo to really see our history, our present and our future. And um, we can all become experts in that way. I'd like to share just a few of Pilmer's findings with you. And um, one of them is that some of the places when we're revisiting our lives are either difficult or challenging. And some of you may recognize this is Forest Lawn. I see Sandy on the call. Um, she's certainly familiar with this beautiful moment in Forest Lawn's life cycle each year when we get to see those cherry blossoms. Um, here, are, uh, I just picked out two tips that I thought would be really relevant. This is a picture of the trial garden, not the trail garden, but the trial garden because flowers are, are given a chance to try their wings here. 
And his first tip is to take advantage of learning opportunities. And Stan, the gardener down at this uh, garden at the waterfront, gives people a chance and the plowers a chance to learn. It's just quite amazing. This is one of the quotes that I really liked, the idea of the adventure of old age. Um, we're not like the rusty tractor stuck in the field, but instead these people saw their opportunities as very much present for their lives. And this was another, another pair of quotes that I thought were very positive and optimistic. And um, I'd certainly say they, they work for me. A second tip, and this was something that I, I look at anew after the pandemic, but the notion of staying connected. And there, um, the group of people, these 1500 people really saw that in order to be engaged in the world, you're going to have to get out of your own comfort zone and do things that may feel a little assertive or even aggressive, but it will help you eliminate isolation. The notion that the shore of solitude, that we need to kind of get away from there and move into the waters. I thought that this notion of choosing happiness, making happiness a choice, not a condition, puts more power in our lives and gives us a chance to think about what do we want to do. And he encourages us to not be so much on automatic pilot, but instead to really be intentional. So that hopefully you're gonna find some sweet treats for yourself as you think about things and look at your own life and say, do you really prioritize reflection? Is it something that you make a point of doing? Is it something that you use as a way of looking back as well as looking forward? And he and the experts recognize that what we're gonna see sometimes is not gonna make us totally happy. We may feel things were undone or we may have wished we could have done them differently. Ideally though, we'll find ways to continue on. And he encourages us to engage with others about life lessons. And I, I have to say being a volunteer with Explore Buffalo with people of all ages, that's been a great opportunity for me to learn not only about my community and our history, but to think about what I, what I can offer. Um, and his project, his book helped me really move my project forward. At first I thought, well, he's already done it. But then I realized my approach of meeting with groups of people, he met with people individually, and also giving them a way to use imagery was a way to go forward. So I did that. And I'll just briefly share with you what I did with my study. This is kind of the outline of how I went forward with it. Um, and uh, the people who were part of it generally were older in, at Baptist Manor, um, younger as a whole at um, the docent programs. And people did come up with ways to describe and depict with pictures their own experiences. These are a couple of them. Some of them had had experience with such reflective writing, others had never done anything like that. And I saw that there were certain patterns that um, were true of across no matter who you were, but that, as I said, this process of self-reflection was somewhat unfamiliar. Most everybody really liked the idea of looking back at their life and some of them were freed up to express things they'd never done before. In fact, some people shared their, their mosaic end products with their family members. And um, many said their family members learned things about them they'd never known. We actually found we had a Rosie the Riveter living at Baptist Manor who had never shared that with anybody before. The article, uh, the paper this week, that wasn't her, but it could have been. Then in terms of um, the opportunities to look back even painful parts, people considered events like divorce and death, they looked at them in new ways. And that was really um, gratifying for me and for them. They really loved hearing about each other. So I felt like this opportunity to ask this big question and give people a chance to answer it with some structure was, was work, worked out very well. And then the fact that people weren't similar, a lot of people were very different from each other in many ways it didn't inhibit their sharing. Then I just wanna share with you, these were the general themes that people came up with. And you can see that for the seniors, their life was really, their, 
their reflections were focused on their own lives um, and their own futures. Whereas for the docents, it was really, um, whether they were the same age as those seniors or not, it was included personal reflections, but also included ways to think about the tours they were offering, the things they were doing. There were certainly limitations to my project. Um, I was worried about sharing uh, privacy, et cetera, but that really didn't seem to be a big problem. But I, I still left as research always leaves you with some limitations. These were my questions when I left the project and um, really unanswered questions, I would say. I started writing an academic article, but I just couldn't find a way to really love it. And uh, this, this is a picture for some of you who may re, um, be familiar with the George Eastman site, which is beautiful, has beautiful gardens in the summer, but had a real beauty in the winter. This was the winter garden this year. But so I, I really didn't know where I was going to go from here. And then I came upon something really amazing. And um, for those of you who are going to look at this uh, later, you can take a look at this link and see information about um, this program. It's a, um, a grant-driven um, entity that uh, looks for ways to think about complicated questions and use them as the basis for theater. And um, it's funded through a local um, wonderful organization, the Ralph C. Wilson Foundation. So of course, Ralph C. Wilson's heart was in both Buffalo and Michigan. and um, so it existed in both places. And these were their um, ideas that they were focusing on when I came across them. Caregiving and being a solo ager, meaning you don't have anybody nearby and you're living alone and you're, you're on your own. So it's used in um, Michigan, but they actually performed here um, last month. And I've written about it in a couple of places. And if you go to their website, you'll see a monograph that includes um, five of my My View pieces with some questions for reflection. And they have more, more plans to come. What I found in this project, which was really a, a designed as a research project, that there are so many ways to transcend the limitations that we may see in our lives, both because Buffalo offers so much and because we, at a time in our life when we're ready to think differently, um, may explore new ways. This um, quotation, it's not too late to seek a newer world. This was part of uh, Carl Pilmer's work. And some of you may recognize this wonderful um, sculpture up in Lewiston. I, I see this as pointing the way to something new for us. I hope that this presentation is going to entice you to think about this question. What have you figured out about life in Buffalo and beyond? And develop some of your own answers. And uh, with that, I'll thank you. And um, we have time for some questions. So I'll stop the share and uh, give Dennis, give the mic back to Dennis and say. There we go. Thank you very much, Sharon. Uh, uh, a, a wonderful journey that seems <laughs> appropriate. Uh, Sharon, I developed this uh, at a, um, a meeting uh, with Explore Buffalo uh, regarding open doors. Uh, Buffalo, um, and I and I and I like the topic because uh, think of the culturals that have expanded our base of just docents, let alone other volunteer operations. Uh, whether it's the brand new uh, Buffalo AKG Art Museum or uh, uh, the Birchfield, I mean uh, uh, the Richardson Complex will uh, continue to develop. Just that, just that museum area. Let's call it for the. Uh, just it invites people to say, what, what's going on here and how can I be involved? And you seem to make the connection with this research, Sharon, and I'm trying to understand how, how either what happens next, uh, how, do you, how do you take this research and, and keep exploring with it? Or do you just say, that's, a, uh, that's as far as I can go with it and, and uh, I'm not sure what else to do. I, I wasn't clear from your presentation if the, if you just continue and maybe you have some pauses. Sounds like you've had some of those and then something, an idea like the Detroit connection. It was a wonderful connection that you made. Yeah, I, and I think Dennis, when you're talking about ways to explore further, I think you mentioned that 
this is you're in the upper 40s of these presentations on Zoom. Um, that has been another way to expand our connections with people because we don't even have to go look for parking downtown. We can be right, I'll click it uh, from home and have a chance to think and do things differently. Yeah, the solo aging project is, I see one way that I'll be able to further my research. I hadn't really figured out where to go from here, except I knew the question was a good one, but I'm, I'm still um, pondering ways to invite people to answer it in a way that feels comfortable and exciting to them. Well, uh, we've got an audience. Let's just see if, uh, if that audience has any thoughts about how to further this, uh, this journey of yours, Sharon. Uh, uh, Anne or, or Joy, whoever is monitoring the uh, questions, do we have some? Yes, we do. Um, Sharon, do you think that you would gather or reconvene your previous groups together in the future to see if they've grown from the experience? You know what? We did do that at Baptist Manor, and um, it was a great opportunity. I promised them I would come back, and I did. And they, that's when I found out about their experiences to share um, their products with their family members and friends. So I did actually do that. Um, I haven't done it with the docents, but uh, that's an interesting idea. Thanks. And we have another one. Sharon, how has your research changed your own opinion to expand your own connections, especially during this post-COVID period? Well, it's funny that you asked that question um, because it really, I, I'm such a people person and a museum person. I was completely thrown by the pandemic. I really didn't know what to do because so many things that I was used to were my go-to things that I lost. So I found a way to actually use Zoom and go to museums with a bunch of people who didn't actually know each other in advance. So we put together this little Zoom group and we, um, we did, I created scavenger hunts at museums that we had access to through Zoom. And we did um, three of those. We went as far as uh, the um, Rijks Museum in Holland and over to the Art Museum in Chicago and the Barnes. And then since then, we've been doing things that are actually going to museums. This last week, we took an Explore Buffalo walk down at Canal Side. Next month, we're going to the Castellani up in Niagara University. I guess what I'm saying is not that that's the only way to do it, but that I realized the need to be proactive, to feed my curiosity, to not feel inhibited when some friends were, you know, really self-isolating, not to let that stop me. So as I said, I put together people that didn't know each other and they all were game to give it a try. So I think the, the Carl Pilmer book was very inspiring to me and has helped me to feel um, confident about pursuing new uh, avenues for exploration. So. Great, we have one more at the moment. Are you presenting this research to other organizations such as the Amherst Senior Center? This kind of uh, discussion would fit right into the kind of programming that they already do. I presented it a few times, um, one for a Zoom program through the Jewish the Jewish Community Center and um, one for another private group, but that's a good idea to reach out to senior centers. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's all we have at the moment, Dennis. Uh, and uh, Sharon, you, you, you write often for the Buffalo News, it gets published. Uh, is, is there a site where people can go to that are interested in your thought process? Because that's really articulated in those writings. Uh, is there a blog? Is, a, is there a, a website? To, where is this information or, or is it up to us to hunt it and find it? <laughs> well, I would say for right now, you can go to the um, Lime, Limelight website, limelight.org, and click on that monograph. And five of my essays are in there, along with questions for individuals, for their family members, and then for policy experts. So that's a good place to start. I'm sorry that the um, the uh, Buffalo News is behind a paywall because I've written, I think I just had my 46th piece published in there, but unless you're a subscriber, you don't get to see it. So uh, unfortunately not yet, but thanks, Jenna. Good, good thought, good question. Well, uh, the, other, the other thing uh, 
Have, have you given further thought, uh, and I'm not sure how the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Uh, fund that, that literally comes to both Detroit and Buffalo. Your mention of that theater project uh, tied to your uh, research is really, to my knowledge, the, and I've been trying to explore this myself, uh, the, the first, com first attempt at connecting the dots of Detroit and Buffalo, very similar cities, uh, slight size difference, obviously, similar problems, similar group of people that are aging, uh, whatever the project is. So I, 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 maybe, maybe you're that link to help unite our city and its journey with Detroit in their journey. Well, what they did in order to have the basis of their theater um, content was to interview people in both cities. So they have 18 people total half in Buffalo area, half in the Detroit area. And I know that we're, I'm working with them to figure out where do we go from here? We've kind of, the initial project was laying out the groundwork to say this is the diversity and commonalities of people who are aging alone. Um, where do we, how do we uh, assist organizations and other places to um, provide them with resources, opportunities for enlivening, enlivening their lives and so forth. So yeah, that's definitely in the works, but not still in process. <laughs> well, let, let's help the process along. Uh, figure uh, sometime in uh, early spring, maybe uh, next year, we could get them on a Zoom call like this with you and get an update uh, and connect the two cities in the way of the Imagine uh, program. How is that? That sounds like a great idea. I know they'd be interested in that too. Good, good. I'll let you uh, give me the contact information and whatnot. We'll, we'll make some invitations as we put that together. Uh, uh, Anne, any last minute questions come in or not? And, and by the way, nope. somebody's got their microphone on and it's making some noises. So check your, please take your audio off everybody if you, if you can, thank you. Uh, no, no further questions, Dennis. All right, well, we, we've, uh, we've landed roughly in the half hour mark, Sharon. Uh, any final thoughts? We've got a minute or two here just to finish up. What, what, what is your, I, I guess I'll ask from a standpoint of your, your involvement with Explore Buffalo, which uh, you, might, you, you might mention the different ways you are. I, I mean, that's a relatively new organization and yet uh, you see the, um, the amazing amount of volunteers and docents that they've trained uh, and that are energized in this community to, to tell the, the bigger story, neighborhood by neighborhood, building by building. Uh, uh, would you wanna just describe your observations of Explore Buffalo and the roles you've played with them currently? Well, I, I'm thrilled to do that because I know you've had them on um, this program a number of times. It's an organization that's just gonna turn 10 years old next year. And um, it offers so many different levels of participation from designing tours. I designed the Jewish cemeteries tour that was very exciting to do, to being, I call it being the caboose at the back of a tour and just helping out in a, a small way, but being part of the process or um, helping out at social events and, a, and just being a friendly person. I think that it, it offers not only information about our community in terms of history and neighborhoods and so forth and architecture, but also gives people a chance to meet others that are outside their normal circle. I wouldn't say that it's a place to necessarily create friendships, but it can be that. Um, but it's certainly a place to see where active, creative, engaged people live and um, follow some new paths. So. I would encourage everybody to uh, think about joining up and um, participating. This this season, this month, um, there are some free tours downtown celebrating architecture. There's a timeline tour and a masters of architecture tour. They're both free to uh, a second person. One buy one get one free, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's an opportunity to um, see new things. So. And I just have to thank the familiar names I see on the on this call. It's great to see people who I know, as well as people I don't know. So thanks so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Sharon, let's summarize 
give us one more time the name of the book that you've been referencing. The fact is that the library, as you mentioned, has copies available at the branches and the, and the downtown library. But give us that name again and also the link to uh, where your articles might be published um, uh, one last time as a summary. Sure do. Um, the book is, uh, it's called 30 Lessons for Living and it's, the author's name is Carl Pillemer, P-I-L-L-E-M-E-R. And the location of my pieces are, is in a monograph that's available at limelight.org. So thanks so much, Dennis. It was really fun to prepare this for you and to share my ideas with everybody. Thanks well, so Sharon, much. thank you very much. Uh, it's our pleasure. Uh, and um, uh, uh, thank you folks for joining us today. Now, we'll see you back here on Zoom uh, in... Um, uh, next week, and let's see who we got. Lost our screen here. Uh, we're going to have Terry Elford, Executive Director of the Michigan Street African American Corridor, uh, and that's an important uh, uh, area of development. And um, and I, I have a feeling uh, that we're, we're going to all get an update on that next week. So uh, uh, join us at camp for uh, Reverend Mark. I'm sorry, for Terry Elford, and uh, then we'll have Reverend Mark Liu uh, the following week in October. So thanks for joining us. Be well and good day. <laughs>